Let's roll. Points on the neutrino. Ooh, it's why is it missing? All wet. Please. I was a little bit concerned yesterday when we finished setting up that it was going to be a little bit thin, but the whole show filled out really nicely. A lot of really good bikes here, cool people. It's good to see everybody. Hey everyone, I'm here with Ava from Liberation Fab. Um, let's take a look at some of the stuff that you have. So what, what's new here? Yeah, there's a lot new here. <laughs> uh, I got three bikes that I'm kind of like debuting at this show, which is really exciting. And I think the one that I'm most proud of is this Y'all Road bike that's okay. right behind Let's me. Take a look. So this is my kind of take on the All Road bike design, which as you can kind of see is like really inspired by the classic Randoner style and some of the functionality there. I think I found that like people who spend a long time on their bikes and like they tend to be the ones who really know what they want, like have their I don't know, systems pretty dialed. And so I took a lot of notes from them. And I think it was really cool partnering with Bella Orange because they have a great selection of parts that look really good, function really well, and just come together to make a very pretty looking bike. Uh, yeah, it kind of takes the all road design, uh, modernizes it a little bit. You can see like flat mount disc brakes. Uh, we got a uh, tapered segmented low trail fork which is a little weird but that just makes sure that handling is really snappy when you have a week's worth of groceries in your front bag sure. and all like the little leather touch points kind of add a bit of classic flair to the whole, whole build. Yeah. Well let me um, so a couple questions. Yeah. Um, where is your where is the most memorable place you've ridden? Ooh, in recent memory, I just completed the Dark Divide 300 route, which goes uh -huh. through the Gifford Pinchot National Forest on the way from Olympia to Portland. And that scenery is stunning. So I moved. I would love to, would love to go out there. It is wild. And you're just like, I mean, I did it kind of as a race. And mm -hmm. so I was just tired as heck. And my mind was like wandering. But then like you'll round this corner and suddenly there's a giant volcano in view. And it's like, yeah. I lived in Seattle for a long time and recently moved across the country to Pittsburgh. And like, you take for granted seeing a giant volcano yes. every day. And like, when you haven't seen one in years, it's like, wow, this is stunning. Like, <laughs> what a privilege to be in this space. Absolutely. Well, what's a what's a trend that you feel like you haven't seen before that's maybe cropping up in more common commonplace, not only in like the production world, but also like in the custom world? Yeah, I mean, I think my Y'all Road bike is kind of touching on a trend of like people coming back to building bikes that are like really practical for everyone for everyday use. And I think that's great. I think like custom bikes are wonderful and exciting. And when you can have a show bike that really shines, it's great. But like most people won't ride that, like sure. building a bike that gets ridden every day, like that gets beat up, that gets abused is like, that is what I want all my experience. I agree. Experience. Absolutely. And, you know, even when you see like a beautiful bike and then it has like chips and di dents and dings and stuff like that, that always kind of makes me happy that people are really enjoying these things that maybe otherwise would be looked at as kind of art pieces. Right. You know? And I think there's art and the, but it can be functional art. And mm -hmm. like, 
art that gets better with age and like every scratch is a story that it holds Absolutely. and yeah i just i love to see people just like totally personalize their bike and i don't know just create a place of love in there awesome well where can where can our internet friend find you yeah so i'm more on, information i'm on liberationfab.com or at liberationfab on instagram awesome well thanks for uh showing us around thanks so much all right, so here I am with Jorgen from Sour Bicycles. Let's take a look at what's new. Why don't you tell us about it? I didn't include this. Is our We recently kind of let it grow up a little bit. It was our all road, and now we've moved it into, if I may, quote unquote, traditional gravel. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so hang on. So hang on. So are we now in the, in the generation of trad gravel? I think we're post gravel. <laughs> Yeah, right, you're you're, you're a uh, uh, you're a visionary. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how else to describe it. You know, we've kind of with the pot, with the purple haze, we've gone into gravel where it's just like mountain bike wheels, mountain bike tires, mountain bike stuff, and it's like yeah, it's a new it's a new gravel. Um, and call it whatever you want. And this, in my mind, like when I we started doing gravel, you know, like forty ish, forty five millimeter mm -hmm. tires. And uh, we wanted to bump the clues up to to fit back into that into that category, and uh, that's what it is. And well, not to spill all the beans, but there's you know, a little brother coming along as well. Oh, okay, all right, all right. You have some uh, you have some VO bits on it. So what do we have? Yeah, so we got we got in touch with you guys, and we wanted to do this, you know sort of black and silver builds. So we've got the the headset, the VO stem, and the handlebars with a nice little flare, you know, all day comfort kind of thing. Pair that up with, of course, the, the seat post to tie the cockpit and, the, and uh, bottle cages. So it's got the the black and silver theme, and then pair that with the GRX groups at the GRX Limited group set, and, uh, and some fancy fast DT Swiss wheels. And and this is kind of representative of, yeah, I guess trad gravel. Did we just make a new uh, a new discipline? I think so. We have to we have to copyright it now. Yeah, cool. Well, also let me ask you. So you guys have. Last time I saw you at Bespoke, you were telling me about all of the um, efforts that you guys made to keep everything, well, move all of the production to Dresden. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how that how that, how that that went and how it's going? Yeah, I mean, it's been a process. When, when we started onshoring all of our production from Taiwan, you know, we had a great relationship with our factory, which I think is a big reason it was so successful. Mm -hmm. we, we kind of said, like, okay, we're going to kind of stop working with you guys, but we also need your help. And uh, we had a great relationship, so we, we did that. We pulled everything on shore mm -hmm. um, into Dresden. Dresden is a bit of an anomaly where there's a lot of empty spaces, and we were able to kind of slip into one of those spaces, relatively low overhead. Lots of lots of just smart people doing smart things. People with CNC machines, people with industrial welding experience, mm -hmm. um, and it, we knew it'd be hard, and it was even harder than that, and it's still really hard. But uh, we're doing it, and we're just kind of honing in the, the processes. We're honing in the, the QC and the shipping, and, and we're, it's been going really well. We're getting to the point that we can keep up with demand. Oh. Right on. Well, that's, that's great to hear. I'm happy for you guys. Thanks. All right. Off camera, we're kind of getting philosophical over here yeah. and saying how I feel like maybe some post-grav is actually turning into basically hybrids. And I don't want to say it's a bad word. <laughs> but in the industry, I feel like they're not necessarily, it's not necessarily what people want to hear. I mean, I guess jumping back to trad, trad grab, traditional gravel, often when I say that, it's just, you know, kind of hearkening back to the days when we, the days, you know, five, <laughs> five, five, five six years ago. <laughs> the days of old. Yeah. We just wanted to ride our cyclocross bikes all year. We loved yeah. our cyclocross bikes, so we, we would put... I remember like, I like 38 millimeter specialized hemispheres or something, you know, just so thick, ready to go. We tried making them tubeless, it never worked. And it was just a way to use the bikes all year. And, and that that de devolved or evolved, depending on how you're looking at, look at it, into these things, which I'm looking at this thing and it's, you know, 50, 60% mountain bike. Like the only thing not mountain bike is these guys going on. And then with this thing, it harkens back to the old days of like, Okay, it's not a cyclocross geometry, but it's it's just a, a fast, capable thing for the half and half. Like, ride the asphalt to the dirt road, ride the dirt road, and get a coffee and go back. Yeah. Oh, you know what? One question I did have. Where is somewhere that is the most memorable that you've ridden? Oh, yeah. Farmington Canyon, which is this road ride 
out to the canyon and then up a dirt road in the canyon. Real steep, real beautiful. You can look all, it's, I think it's called like a Keyway Canyon or something. You can look all the way down into the valley. And I rode it with Tom. Tom had a Cannondale summer, another cyclocross bike with 33s. I had my Soma double cross with 38 ish. And we rode up that and rode back down it. And it's definitely one of those moments of like, I think this is how I die. <laughs> That's a pretty intense memory. Yeah, and we yeah. Made I it feel down. like I feel like near death experiences, generally speaking, yeah, uh, are memorable. Yeah, <laughs> we made it down and all was well. We rode home and it was great. And I, I remember we was on Soma Sea Line, like the Pan Racer, okay, super yeah, thin, yeah, yeah. like yeah. pre Compass or whatever tires. And this is how I go. And it was all fine. But yeah, that was that definitely that, that sticks up there. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Uh, great memories. Likewise. All right. Yeah. So here I am with Alder from Rodriguez Cycles. Why don't you show us this little thing that we have down here? It's a mini velo that we made, uh, designed to fit into a Samsonite carry-on suitcase. So for a lot of our customers, they like to go travel in Europe, but there are a ton of travel restrictions on trains. Um, and this allows you to take a bike that you know fits a full-size human. And we can make it you know in any size for anybody, but it rides like a normal bike but it just packs down extremely, extremely small. What kind of bars are these? Let's talk, let's talk about those. These are the Vila Orange Utility Bars. And I just love how modular they are. You can kind of orient the rack in every way. You can add a bottle, bottle cage on either side on the back here. But my kind of like goal with this was to possibly carry the suitcase that you would put this into on the front of the bike, which would make it the ultimate kind of travel by you know on the bike and then hop on a train get off and then keep going so how, how many couplers does this have it says six couplers you can take it apart literally to just the each tube essentially so you could pretty much put it like a pocketbook yeah or something like that right let's make a tandem version you make a tandem yeah we make a tandem version it's the same 20 inch wheels but 14 couplers and it fits into two yeah. samsonite suitcases that is amazing and now all of all of the Rodriguez bikes are completely custom, yep. right? So whatever you dream, whatever you dream. Uh, I'm six one and I can fit this, but we've made bikes this uh, six pack for people that are six five, and it still fits in the suitcase. That's amazing. All right, let's go over your uh, your cow bike because I think that that's super. That'll be super attention grabbing for a lot of people. This is my personal uh, race, gravel bike, bike pack, ultra endurance, whatever. I commute on this. It is like an extension of my body. I, I love it. I've cracked it a couple times, you know, but that's the beauty of steel. You can just you can keep repairing it over and over and over again. The paint is painful to do over and over again, but... Yeah, we got a bunch of uh, Monet bits on here. Got a knife. Hidden behind the wide foot bottle cage. I love it. It's a mix of the down tube is a uh, pair to a hexagon. It's the 25th anniversary Detta Chai. I think it was the 25th anniversary. And then the top tube is a hexagon as well. So a lot of shaped tubing there. So it, yeah. The bike's very stiff. So when you push down on it, it just goes all for it all that energy just goes for it where's the most memorable place that you've ridden i think probably painted hills oregon it's like they it's surreal honestly out there and very hot but they also have like a lot of uh kind of like copper deposits and stuff so oh, there's like a really lot cool. in the mountains it's like everything is so green you know i think that's probably one of the most memorable definitely not like definitely not a hard ride mm -hmm. but i feel like everyone should go out there any bike packing trip my mom goes on for her birthday is so hard. That right there. You're walking for seven miles. It's like taking your taking your bike for a walk. Take your bike for a walk. Yeah. Take your dog for a walk. You take your bike for a take walk. Take your bike for a walk. You need exercise. Yeah, every you I mean if you're not hiking biking for like at least two miles, you know, like is it really bike packing shit? Yeah. Well last question. Okay. What are those? Is it the logs? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. We have matching lobsters 